Cops of Reddit, what was your biggest? I truly am sorry I have to arrest you moment and why? I'm not a cop. But I played one in a play in grade school. I was supposed to arrest someone after they confessed. But poor kid forgot his line. But I didn't. So it came off as I made up a burglary charge on the spot and hauled him off. I never felt more corrupt in my life. It haunts me to this day. Edit. Whoa. My first gold. Thank you kind folks for all the positivity towards this comment and I'm glad my little childhood story could bring a bit of sunshine to such a dreary thread. I'm no longer a cop but my first ever DUI arrest was a guy I went to a very small college with and we graduated together. I knew his family. His dog's name. We were friends. He was weaving all over both lanes and running onto the shoulder on both sides of the road. He cried and begged me to just let him go and he'd walk home and that he was sorry. He had to go to jail. I draw the blood for DWI arrests so not a cop but. I was sitting in the assistant district attorney's office when an officer calls in and he stated that he felt horrible arresting this lady for drunk driving, even though she was plastered, because she was at her boyfriend's house and they all were drinking and the boyfriend's friend started trying to uh, pay her and her boyfriend did nothing about it. So she hit the friend in the head and got in her car and fled from danger. Another driver called her into 911 for swerving. The lady drove 3 miles and made it to a gas station where she was found trying to call her friends on her phone for help. He felt bad that he had to bring her in but the ADA didn't accept any charges on her and the officer took her to her friend's house. Two other officers went back to the boyfriend's house and they got arrested with existing warrants and the sexual assault. Seeing that woman sitting in the jail for the few minutes she was there was heartbreaking. She was covered in scratches and her clothes were torn. I'm so glad they didn't charge her for fleeing being raped. So I'm finishing up some preliminary paperwork in the Dollar General parking lot in reference to a sharp lifting when I see a pickup go past me at a high rate of speed. I didn't have the opportunity to radar or pace it. But it was highway speeds in a 35. So I get on him after the 7 or 8 blocks to catch up he turns into the cemetery. I activate lights and here we go. Get out. Signs of an obvious DUI. I begin standardized field sobriety tests when he starts bawling. Go to play the nice guy. Tell him to take his time and collect himself. Well he asks. Through his tears. If we can move to a different area. This is an issue. Because the cemetery isn't very flat and the area we were was more optimal than any other area nearby. Well then I look behind him and see a tombstone with a familiar name. This guy was doing SFSTs in front of his dead mother. Within the past two years. This guy had his house burned down. His mother died. And his wife divorced. And I knew all of this. I didn't feel bad or guilty making the arrest. It definitely had to happen. However. I did feel for the person. I can only hope he's working to better himself now. This was about 4 months ago. 4 attorneys go golfing. While golfing one accuses the other of being a cheat. Argument escalates until the accuser loses his shtee and hits the dude with a gold club over the back. Hard enough to leave a mark and snap the head off the golf club. Arrest the dude and he is just sobbing in the patrol unit about how he will lose his license and he is so far in debt with his school loans. The dude needed to be arrested but you still had to feel empathy with him knowing he just drunkenly flushed his degree down the toilet. Not a cop. But a former host translator for a crucialina. Once had to translate for our security officer as he expelled a French gay couple from the ship for beating a German woman up for reserving chairs at an empty lounge. It had a sign telling people not to reserve seats. The one thing they don't tell you when you get hired as a translator. People get mad at you. Not the guy who's giving the actual orders. I've never heard so much cursing in French as I did that day. Not a cop. Also not me. This happened to some friends. My friend Jay is allergic to a lot of things. And accidentally ate something she was allergic to. Her parents called an ambulance. But it's a small town and it was already attending an accident so they rushed her up to the hospital themselves. Her dad was driving and was speeding and somehow managed to get pulled over by the one cop that wasn't attending the accident. 
Thankfully the officer realized pretty quickly what was going on. Apparently he was surprised my friend's dad pulled over at all given the circumstances. He couldn't allow her parents to speed the rest of the way. So he put Jay and her mum in his car and rushed her up to the hospital himself. Stayed there until he was sure she was okay. My friend's dad still got a ticket. But the cop also gave him some advice on how to dispute it given it was an emergency. I believe in the end he got off. There was a couple that lived in my district that I knew from outside of work. I happened to know the man had cheated on his wife. And was all around a smarmy bastard. The wife was a respected member of the community with a prominent job. The couple also had a young son. And were members of the local church. One day. A domestic disturbance gets called out at their residence. Dude was being an ass and got into an argument with her. She gets frustrated enough that she punches him in the face and he calls 911. He says he doesn't want to press charges. Just wants us to separate everyone and keep the peace. Wife does what every good Christian is raised to do. And tells the truth. Our state has a mandatory arrest law if probable cause is found for any domestic violence crime. Unfortunately. That meant we had to take this sweet. Otherwise lol abiding lady to jail. At least the bad guys have the good sense to lie to us. Edit. Jeez. People. I realize that this was a good lawful arrest. And that the wife in this case committed a crime. Also. Mandatory arrests for DV crimes are a good thing. This situation was unique in that I knew the couple socially before. And knew the emotional abuse he was doling out. The point of the story is that it was difficult on an emotional level to have to arrest someone I knew with that kind of backstory. Not a cop but a paramedic. Had a patient that was driving on a freeway at 100 km per hour when she started having a seizure. A man also driving on the freeway noticed her slumped at the wheel so he sped up. Pulled in front of her then used his car to slow hers down. I rock up. Assess and go to transport the lady to hospital. Cops rock up as they do and find the man had warrants out for his arrest. Slightly awkward. But he had to leave his car on the freeway and go off to the cells. This is the kind of thing that would probably trouble me the most. When. Of all things. A good deed is the reason for someone's past catching up with them. If laws are meant to encourage good behavior. I would argue this sort of thing should count for a lot legally. Friend of mine who is a cop woke me at 3 in the morning to tell me this story. I completely understand why. I would be bawling my eyes out at making an arrest he did. He was called in to deal with a domestic dispute and arrested the woman because she beat the ever loving shti out of the man. He told me he probably had a broken nose and wouldn't be shocked if he had vision problems one of his eyes for the rest of his life. My friend brought the woman in and she had some fresh marks as well. A couple cuts and a solid bruise on her arm. She also had a couple wounds that had clearly been there for a couple days and a couple that looked like they had just healed. My friend thinks that the man was abusing her for the longest time and she just snapped and defended herself. Thing is. My friend's mother was also abused by his father. So arresting who seemed to be the overall victim broke his heart. Obligatory not a cop but. Friends and I were in a popular. Haunted cemetery in the area at night to get creeped out or whatever. Came out of the woods and a forest preserve cop scared a shti out of us by standing near the entrance in the dark then turning on a flashlight as we approached. He brought us to his car to give us all FP curfew violation tickets and a lecture about people getting mugged in there at night. He gets to one of my friends and as he puts in his license info an alarm bell goes off. He quickly grabs my friend and puts him against the car and cuffs him. Turns out he had a warrant for missing court for a reckless driving ticket. FP cop was pissed our friend didn't tell him he had a warrant because a. The computer doesn't say what the warrant is for, or didn't at the time. So all they know at first is that they have to quickly arrest someone who may or may not be dangerous and b. If he knew there was a warrant he wouldn't have run the license. They were just trying to keep kids out of the forest preserve at night. Not arrest people for traffic court violations. It was Christmas Eve at a super fancy hotel downtown in my city. Lady drove her vehicle into a parking barrier and hotel security called it in. Got out there and she had her daughter in the car with her. Mom had recently bought her a Christmas puppy. 
a tiny little corgi. So anyways. I called for one of our DWI units to do the test because it's a felony for the child passenger. Mum fails and we have to handcuff her. She tried to run and my partner takes her to the ground as he falls slipping all in front of daughter and Christmas puppy. Mom goes to jail and I had to stay with the little girl until her aunt arrived. Learn dad walked out on them earlier in month and mom was having a tough time dealing with it. Mom needed to go to jail. She was drunk but I felt for her and her daughter. One time I was about 15 years old I live in Canada and we were all at a bush party. So it was probably around 12 at night and I was just kinda like lying on the ground, not that drunk. Comma so anyways the cops roll up and they're usually pretty chill in my area about these things cause they happen so often. Anyways the cop came over to me asked me to walk in a straight line. I was fine and I knew I could walk fine. So I proceeded to walk in a straight line completely tripped over a rock smashed my face on the ground and the cop then said I'm sorry buddy but I'm gonna have to take you to the drunk tank. Anyways I got a ride with him talked him out of taking me to the tank and he drove me home. My parents were pissed about my mouth bleeding all over the carpet and that's it. More of a hindsight one tbh. But. I was a detective in the APA unit for 3 years. So many resulted in evidence showing that the victim had lied. Usually fell into one of a few categories. Being called a SLT at school. Had an argument with boyfriend before going out on the town and sleeping with someone else. Historic allegation and now divorce and there is a child custody battle. There were plenty of genuine cases. And the most important thing was to treat each case with complete lack of bias. Because it is totally possible that Wape could occur in the above circumstances. So as long as the allegation is maintained by the victim we press on with investigating making every effort to disregard any confirmation bias. But in many cases the evidence starts to pile up. We clarify the victim's account and they drop it. And we close the case. One always sticks in my mind. Had to arrest a 16 year old kid for our pay and interview him with his parent present. Asking him some very intimate questions. Once we had the victim's phone she was bragging about having sex with him to her friends. I was so angry at her. That kid's life was ruined. Not to mention the damage it does to the other genuine victims. Who depend on the police for a robust investigation into one of the worst crimes that can happen to you. When she has just reaffirmed their cynicism. Obligatory not a cop but. Double quote. I'm a 911 dispatcher. Took a call from a woman who was yelling and screaming get away from me. Hear a male in the background and she is hardly answering us. Through GPS we get a location. Get a couple officers headed that way. Then she starts to talk to us. Long story short. Her boyfriend was harassing her. Stalking her. She didn't say he hit her or anything. But he was being really aggressive with her and she was just trying to get him to leave her alone. Guy ended up running away before officers got to her. And they never found him. But they did find out that she had a warrant for her arrest for failure to appear for some previous charges. So she gets arrested. Like. That's a real shitty day. Getting hassled by your dickhead boyfriend. Then call for help. Then you get arrested and he's free. Not a cop. But I was arrested for revenge porn after my abusive ex-boyfriend made a false complaint. I had to wait 7 hours in a cell before I was told there was no evidence. And another 2 before they let me go. As I was being led out the officer accompanying me said she recommended I file a complaint or sue them as there was no reason for them to have arrested me at all. Not a cop. But the story fits. I was doing volunteer work with disadvantaged children in the community. It was basically an after school program for kids who were from broken families and needed a supportive place to be. In talking with the supervisor. She explained how rough it is for some of the kids. On graduation day. Most of the kids parents will actually show up. The police know this and show up as well and use it as an opportunity to arrest any parents with outstanding warrants. So you're a 9 year old whose parents are never in your life because they are deadbeats. It's supposed to be a happy day and mom and dad are actually there. But then they get hauled off in handcuffs. It just sucks all around. Not a cop but a prosecutor. 
I was in law school working as a prosecutor for my summer job under the supervision of an assistant DA. I'm getting ready for my first trial of the summer. It's a fairly bad one. This guy was drunk and lit a random car on fire. The fire spread to the house because it was under a connected structure. An elderly man was inside and barely escaped and is messed up from smoke inhalation. So it's my first week in the office, but my second summer. So I'm comfortable just stepping in and doing the work. My job is going to be jury selection and nothing else to get me back in the groove. In walks the defendant through the jail door into the courtroom. Shackled at the wrists and ankle. I instantly recognize him. It's a guy who I used to work with had some classes with who was constantly trying to convince my college girlfriend to date him instead of me. I told my boss I needed to recuse myself from the case. But I stuck around and watched him get convicted. Ended up talking my boss into a lighter sentence recommendation though by vouching for his character potential before he became an alcoholic. Ended up recommending. And getting. Jail time plus rehab. I assume he's out by now. I've told this story here before but I used to live with a cop. She was called to a shoplifting incident and found a young, totally emaciated looking boy, couldn't have been older than 12, who the shopkeeper had pinched stealing some bare essential. A loaf of bread or a can of beans or something. She and her partner did everything they could to talk him out of pressing charges on the kid but the shopkeeper insisted and unfortunately her partner that day happened to be a superior or something and whether or not to follow through with the arrest was out of her hands. She had to take this crying. Scared. Starving boy to juvenile prison with teenagers who had committed real crimes. She did everything she could to ensure he got immediate social services attention and lobbied to keep the charges from appearing on his record at all. But she still felt broken having to do that to a kid who needed help. I've heard a story from a police officer in Australia, where medicinal marijuana was not legal yet, having to arrest somebody for supplying marijuana oil to kids with cancer and severe epilepsy. There was a news article stating they felt like total pieces of shti because the guy they raided was a decent person trying to help a family friend with crippling illness and not actually selling the stuff to druggies. Even though it's legal now it's so tremendously difficult to get people still need to find other avenues to obtain it. There was also that dad in QLD that was arrested for giving oil to his kid with cancer. They put the kid into care. Kid lost a bunch of weight while in care because kid couldn't eat without oil to control the nausea. CPS blamed the weight loss on the parents and claimed neglect. I am a cop. But this one isn't my story. It's a buddy of mine. Woman calls 911 from hospital. Says she had been raped in our jurisdiction and was at the hospital awaiting our pay kit. Officer responds and begins preliminary investigation. He'd been talking to this woman for a couple hours when dispatch raised him on the radio. The dispatcher decided it was a good idea to run a warrant check on the woman and discovered she was wanted through Kentucky, not the state we worked in, with full extradition. Meaning if she were found in any state in the county the state of KY wanted her shipped back to face their charges. I don't recall what it actually was that she was wanted for but it wasn't for anything I'd consider major enough to warrant full extradition. At that point the officer didn't really have a choice taking her into custody. It was done so obviously after being treated and released from the hospital. But nonetheless that was a shitty moment despite the magnitude of whatever she did in Kentucky just happened not sure how the guy ended up here but he had no phone no family to call wasn't welcome at the homeless shelter because he was caught drinking there very cold outside mental health evaluated him and kicked him free saying they couldn't help didn't have any vouchers or money to stay at a motel he asked to go to jail i warned him of trespassing at the police department for the next 24 hours he refused to leave arrested for trespassing was the best worst option so i've been to jail a couple times but my town has a pretty big homeless problem there are a lot of shelters and everything but it's just not enough sometimes i don't even know how many people i was locked up with who had a similar story no family no place to stay no food no reason for mental hold and all they want is three hots and a cot so they will trespass or go commit petty theft and intentionally get caught. 
just little things that they would rather have on their record than go another night starving in the cold. Some of the saddest shit I've seen. Years ago I pulled a car over for extreme lane travel. The vehicle was wandering into oncoming traffic and then it would go clear across the road and into the ditch. Then back again. When I got the rig stopped I found the driver to be an active duty marine on his first night back from a tour in Iraq. That was by far the hardest arrest of my career. I actually sat in my patrol car for over 10 minutes fighting with myself but in the end I had to go with a promise that I'd made to myself that I would never let a DUI go. I'd cleaned up the results of drinking and driving too many times. But I will admit to you that this rough and tough cop had tears in his eyes as I took the man into custody. Was a MP on a Marine Corps base, actual location withheld, and got a call about an alcohol related disturbance at the barracks. I figured it was the same old shti about drunk marines getting into a fight. Pulled into the parking lot to find an older woman. Pretty well dressed. Going berserk on a female marine and a male marine. Both marines were still in uniform so I could tell the ranks, PFC female. One STSGT male. Everyone was drunk. Turns out this lady was the wife of the one STSGT and she caught wind of him cheating on her with the PFC. Confronted them at the barracks after they both admitted to the affair. The worst part of this was the one STSGT was an old SGT of mine from a different unit before our lat moved to 5811. The woman was escorted off base and we had to arrest the two marines. Army. But. Full stop. Full stop. The cool down barracks room was next to mine. We had this lieutenant that had formerly been an enlisted guy with SF. One Saturday night. The MPs come escorting him to the room. They leave and we go knocking on his door to see if he's okay. He was very nonchalant when he replied yeah. Walked in on neighbor F King my wife. Figured I should leave before I murdered them both. We were like that's good thinking. Would you like a beer? Double quote. I used to work the side of town that the mall and the Walmart were on. Walmart is basically mecca for shoplifting and I'd spend a lot of my time on day shifts basically picking up loss prevention apprehensions. It was a fairly rare occurrence, surprisingly, that a shoplifter was ever a person in need. Usually just people stealing shti because they can. Got called one day to a woman in her 20s in LP custody. She'd stolen a pair of swim trunks and sunscreen. She had a little boy with her and said she didn't have any money and just wanted to get him those things so he could go to a classmate's swim party that he's been invited to. Broke my f-king heart for both her and her kid having to witness it. I offered to pay but LP said they couldn't accept and for liability reasons if they'd done an app they had to prosecute. Not sure if that's true or not but damn I felt f-king terrible. My ex wee dealer was the sweetest. Nicest. Gentlest man I've ever known. Dude would never hurt a fly. Cops used his dad who was recovering at a state owned hospital to get to him. It was the only time he wasn't completely off the grid and if the cops didn't feel like shti about it then they must have been heartless fucks. Fortunately he wasn't carrying much at the time and somehow his roommate managed to dump the stash at home before the cops came in so he was charged with possession instead of distribution and was able to get bail after 3 months. Former immigration officer. We had a guy come in thinking he was doing his final interview for citizenship. Well. Turns out he was knowingly using a stolen identity to sneak off back to Egypt because he had a second family there. He brought his other family with him that day. I had to order him arrested in front of his four kids. You see. Knowingly using a stolen identity to defraud the government carries a mandatory two year federal prison sentence. So he was going to do time then get his lying ass deported. The problem was he had brought his family over on IR visas. And his wife. The mother of these kids. Had zero education. Spoke zero English. And had worked zero hours while in the states. Which means she had zero chance of maintaining her or her kids permanent resident status. Now. These kids were in their early to late teens and had spent 7 years. The formative ones. Growing up in America. They were fully Americanized. But. Since they legally entered the U.S. They didn't qualify for dreamer status. And since the oldest was just shy of applying for college. 
they couldn't adjust to a student visa. So because of their piece of shti father. I had to essentially deport an entire family of decent people. I really hope he gets raped in prison for what he did to his family. Not a cop. But my mom was arrested for a bounced check. My mom is 4 feet 11 inches. A little powder puff really. The bounced check was for $2 and changed to the library for an overdue book. The library took like 2 months to cash it. So my mom forgot and closed the account. A couple years later. This young cop showed up to arrest my mom and you could tell he felt really bad. He didn't want to do it. But they had been a warrant issued and he was there to collect. When I was first starting out on patrol I was driving my lieutenant, Nick. We got called to a dispute. A lady let her dog stop to pee on the curb in front of a residence. The homeowner and his family didn't want that because in the hot summer heat it made the whole patio smell like piss. He went and yanked the leash. Causing the dog to yelp in pain, might have caused a scratch too. But I can't remember too well. She called 911 because he hurt her dog it obviously wasn't animal cruelty. But since dogs are property it's criminal mischief for damaging property. The woman wanted him arrested. The man had a non-verbal autistic daughter around age 10 and no one to care for her because his parents, her grandparents, didn't understand how to deal with an autistic child. We were pleading with her not to press charges. But she just wouldn't budge. Even while his daughter was freaking out and crying. We told the man we'd have to arrest him because she was pressing charges. But he was eligible for that and we'd get him out as soon as possible. He understood and was totally reasonable about it. We let calm his daughter. Hug her. And tell her he'd be right back we handcuffed him out of sight of his daughter. The BTCH complainant watched him saying bye to his daughter completely unfazed. My lieutenant. Made somebody with a lot more time do the arrest and had him out within 2 hours on a dat. But it all still sucked for all of us. My brother is an officer and I know his most traumatizing moment. It wasn't an arrest though. There was a single mum with 14 kids under 16. She just had another baby and it was deemed she did not have ability to care for another child, single mum. Not a single dad helping. Small house considering number of kids living there. She obviously refused to give up her baby so police had to accompany social workers to take the child. My brother said it was awful being surrounded by all the kids crying. Screaming. Begging for the child not to be taken and a mum who clearly loved her baby but couldn't cope and she was sobbing too. I know he felt bad. And still does now. But he had to do his job and it was in the best interests of the baby. That affected him more than countless other incidents he's encountered.